Hello, welcome back. This is Grillenheimer going back to the original intent of the channel before any silly card games were created. Uh, Gamers Need Christ, thanks for following. Thanks for being here. Been here quite a long time. Uh, this is probably my ninth anniversary. I can't remember the exact day I started. I guess I could try to find out on YouTube. Uh, but this is Romans 5, the second part. We looked at the first half about the benefits of, of righteousness, and we kind of looked at it in, a, in a, an unusual perspective. Uh, you know, God pouring his love out on us, us being able to pour that, uh, pour that love out uh, as the, bestowed by the Holy Spirit to people around us, and then in, in, in turn worshiping and praising the Lord uh, which creates kind of a love triangle, if you will. And that's kind of how it was d described to me by, in a, in a, from a pastor in a church years and years ago. Um, and it may not have been this exact passage. Okay, so let, let's continue. We're going to start in Romans 5, verse 12, and read to the end. Uh, and, and of course... I'm reading out of my 1978 NASV here. Therefore, just as through one man, sin entered into the world and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because we all sinned. This is going to be the theme for the rest of this section of Romans. Um, and he's going to pound this in over and over and over again is that it's not God's fault it is Adam and Eve's fault for bringing sin into the, into the world because before the fall of man the world was good um, and it was perfect from a spiritual level of God's creation it wasn't God's fault it fell it was our fault it fell and just as Adam brought in sin to the world which brings death there is going to be one who is going to die to help wash the sin away so we can all get back to God okay so that that's really the rest of this in a nutshell for just as uh the awkward teenager may not want to have anything to do with their parents anymore the parent still loves them and this is pretty much the uh, how God in his relationship with us uh, from the Jews in the wilderness the whole section of Kings up and down up and down is it reflects our life on a day-to-day -day basis, our relationship with Jesus, our relationship with the Lord. Uh, it is always up and down. So, for until the law, sin was in the world, but sin was not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam until Moses, even over those who had not sinned in the likeness of the offense of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. So, well, let's just keep going. But the free gift is not like the transgression or the sins. For if by the transgression of the one, the sin of Adam, the many died because he brought death upon us all. Much more did the, the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abound to the many. And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned. I just lost my place. <laughs> For on the one hand, the judgment arose from one, one transgression resulting in condemnation. But on the other hand, the free gift arose from many transgressions resulting in justification. For if by the transgression of the one, death reigned through the one, much more those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in the life through the one, Jesus Christ. 
So again, he is just really pounding this image hard that more like how just as Adam brought sin into the world and death to us all, that Jesus, who was not so unlike Adam because they were both there in the beginning, eh, kind of, um, that Jesus was going to come back to be able to redeem us all. So Adam gave us death and condemned us all to judgment. And Jesus came to save the many, to justify us going back to God and bridging the gap of separation that we did to ourselves by not doing the one thing we were told not to do. And just as we tell our own kids, you know, don't run through the house, don't run through the house. What are they going to do? They're going to run through the house. And as a parent myself, I realized it's like, okay, I, I, I realized, okay, I can't say don't run through the house or don't pick that up because they will. The best thing we found out was to say the opposite, you know, just to say walk through the house, please, not don't run walk through the house, walk, walk, making it a command, leaving off the subject of you, you know, the pronoun, uh, and just saying, make it a direct command, walk through the house, please, walk. You know, instead of saying don't run, if you say don't whatever, they're going to do it anyway. Uh, and, and just as God in Genesis told Adam and Eve, don't eat from this tree, temptation was there, the temptation was brought upon for Eve to eat, and she also gave it to Adam, and if you notice, they're talking about Adam, or Adam here, not really her, but really the two, both of them, really the both of them, because they brought upon sin into the world, they condemned us all to death. And we, and we needed salvation. We needed justification for us to be able to be saved. And that's where Christ comes in. So then as through one transgression or Adam's sin, there resulted condemnation to all men, even so through one act of righteousness, the crucifixion, there resulted justification of life to all men. For as through the one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners. Even so, through the obedience of the one, capital O, Christ, the many will be made righteous. And the law came in that the transgression might increase, but where sin increased, Grace abounded all the more. And every time you see the word law and the cap and the L is capitalized, they're talking about the Ten Commandments. So and even in verse 14, they're saying from Adam until Moses, death reigned. Adam cursed us all. He brought condemnation on us. We had to be uh, fit spiritually and physically dead. Um, he brought about the second death to us for the most part. And and during that time, sin was not defined. Sin was not really defined, um, which is, in a way, why the Lord caused the flood to wipe out the sin of the world and just start all over again with Noah's family because sin was ill-defined at the time. But th this was God's will. He knew what he was going to do. He knew the future. He, and this was sort of all kind of pre-written through him, through, 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 through the Lord. So, you know, there, there's stages of this. And it's all very parallels with itself resulting in our eventual salvation through Christ. Uh, and just as... 
Adam, Adam did one thing wrong and condemned us all and broke the world, if you will. Jesus was the one who is of God and of us, who walked with us, who taught us, and taught us to walk with him, to follow him, to believe in him, for him to die, be crucified, and come back within three days and, and be ascended back into heaven. And as John was saying in his gospel, all we have to do is believe. All we have to do is believe. So, But it was the law itself that it's like, okay, here's the stipulations, here are the ten things you don't need to do, you shouldn't do. Because of that, sin increased. Because now it had definition. So let's kind of flip ahead to Romans 7, 7. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? May it never be. On the contrary, I would not have come to know sin except through the law. For I would not have known about coveting if the law had not said, you shall not covet. And let, let's keep reading. But sin taking opportunity through the commandment produced in me coveting of every kind. For apart from the law, sin is dead. So it's not saying that... You know, That there is no sin without the law, we just wouldn't know what it would have been if it hadn't been given to us by God to say, this is what you should not do. But then when uh, that was the start of it, that was the start of defining sin, and then Jesus came down, came down, was, was born to us to explain Here's some more rules. This is what you should also do. Love one and uh, you know, love others just as you would uh, want love yourself or treat others as as how you would want to be treated. Okay, on top of many other laws, where we the foundation for a lot of our laws here in, in America comes from are from what Jesus taught. Um, and, oh, this, yeah, let, let's just keep going. And uh, so then the law is holy, and the commandment is holy, and righteous and good. So, you know, Paul here in, in Romans is basically saying, yeah, the law is still pertinent. The Ten Commandment, Ten Commandments, we still need to keep. Jesus Himself even said that. Uh, but for the most part, it's all about believing. It's all about following the law, basically doing what we're told. Because Adam and Adam and Eve didn't do it. Condemned us all. And it took Jesus to be able to justify us all being saved. Not just one little group, not just the Jews, not just the Pharisees, not just the Gentiles, but John 3.16, the whole world. Every single stinking one of us. And the law came in that the transgression or the sins might increase, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. That's because he's wanting to, uh, it doesn't mean the more we sin, the more grace we get. No, 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 no. It's just there's more of us sinning. And so God is having to extend his hand of grace to all of us. Because no matter how far we separate ourselves from him, he still loves us. He still wants to get shed his grace on all of us and I think that's really what that means here because Jesus's blood washes away our sins 
Jesus' blood, his death, his crucifixion, is the center of all this, of the center of the world being fixed, the center of saving our souls and bringing us right with God and making us righteous. So even so, through one act of righteousness, there resulted justification of life to all men. As sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is powerful. This is, th this is a pretty much the cornerstone of Paul laying down, and it, it's a, a little muddled, but I, I think we kind of undid the strings all together and go, oh, okay, Jesus Christ is the key to our salvation. Jesus Christ is all we need. If he's all we need and he's all, he's the reason to show that he, that his life, his death, for God so loved us all, he, <clears throat> he gave his only son to save the whole world. Every one of us. And if thanks to thanks be to God, thanks to uh, Jesus' crucifixion, as horrible as a way that is to die, it saves every one of us because his death destroyed the sin of the world. It, doesn't, the, the, it does not destroy the act of us sinning because he's still giving us the will to come back to him. And thankfully with Christ's death, when the veil was ripped and torn at the same time and the earthquake and, and the sun being blotted out of the sky, we now have direct contact contact to God through Jesus. That's why we need to pray ever ceasingly because that is our walk with God now. Our walk with Jesus is accepting him into our hearts, believing in him, believing that he lived. And there's probably more I could reference in here, but I'm going to leave it at that. For God is our salvation. Our salvation is justified through the death of Jesus Christ. His blood washes away our sin. So dis despite all the crazy things you may have done in your life, you can go to God directly by praying through in Jesus Christ's name to ask him in into your soul, to ask him in and be part of him, to turn your life around. Because it could happen. It, and it could only have happened. It, it could not have happened without Jesus' death. Without him being born. Without his life. Without his teachings. And his resurrection. And his ascension. This is the key to Christianity. So thanks for being here. Thanks for following. We'll catch you next time. And for homework, go ahead and read Romans 6 because it really delves into the whys of, of this uh, and things to watch out for. Now, have a good day, but a blessed day. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.